Project Triangle Strategy was the best game shown off of the Nintendo Direct the past week or whenever it was, and this is now my most anticipated game now that Bravely Default 2 has released. So I'm just going to be giving some of my thoughts, discussion, based on the demo that was released that I played through, as well as the trailer. So why am I so excited about this game is what I think many will be thinking. Well, uh, I've played uh, Octopath Traveler, Bravely Default, Fire Emblem, and this is pretty much like a spiritual successor to Octopath Traveler. Gameplay is different because it's like a tactical RPG versus like a JRPG kind of a thing. But I am extremely excited for this. Right as I saw that it said like HD 2D, I was like, oh, this is, yes, this is fantastic. Octopath Traveler is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, just because, you know, the music's fantastic, the, the, the stories are, are pretty interesting, and then the, the look with the sprites and the HD 2D is just very, very unique. And I was super excited for it when it was, before it came out, as I played, like, the prologue demo for that, and when it actually came out, and then, I mean, that, that's just an overall super polished, really well done game. And then, of course, I've also played um, Bravely Default and Bravely Second, which, you know, is made by the same people that made Octopath Traveler, as well as Bravely Default 2, which I just started playing. And then, uh, yeah. So, the first, like, thoughts, just looking at it, is that it kind of seems like a combination between, like, Octopath Traveler and Fire Emblem. Now, I know many people would also say this is, like, Final Fantasy Tactics and that kind of stuff. I haven't played, um, Tactics myself, but I have played Fire Emblem, Three Houses, and uh, Octopath Traveler, and it's pretty much a combination between those kind of a thing. You have pretty much the same combat as like a Fire Emblem except uh, you the characters move at different times depending upon their speed level and all that kind of like a, a JRPG. As for the demo gameplay impressions, I really quite enjoyed the demo. I think most of the game is pretty much perfect for re release. I think if it released how it is now, it would be perfectly fine, but of course there are some things that could be changed a little bit. But the first off, the main thing is that the battles. Battles are the main part of the game, and they're very fun, but they're also very challenging, which is to be expected with this kind of a thing. You really have to plan out how you're going to use each character and how they're going to attack and like all of that. Um, I really did enjoy how you move the characters. Obviously they have all their different moves. Um, and then you select which position you want to be in so that enemies either attack you or don't attack you. And then if you get two characters in between another one, like you're flanking um, one of the enemies, then you can perform an attack after you attack that person, which I think is a really interesting idea. And I think it works pretty well because you can really set up some situations where you get people behind someone, attack, and then you have someone else come on in, and then it just does more damage. I think it's a really, really cool option. I think for the final game, adding a difficulty option would be nice. I know that games like Octopath Traveler don't have a difficulty option, but I didn't really think that the game needed one as long as you're leveling up and all that, you're pretty much fine. But with this game, I think to be more accessible to people, just add a difficulty option like Bravely Default 2 did, where you have easy, normal, and hard. I think that would be perfectly fine. Even Fire Emblem has a difficulty option, so if you just add that, that'll probably be good. You know, nerf or, or buff some of the enemies depending upon the, the difficulty. But besides that, I'm glad that they are utilizing this HD 2D mechanic more, besides just Octopath Traveler. I think that it fits the game pretty well. Some weird things with happen with the camera, uh, I, I, the camera's a bit weird. See, in games like Octopath Traveler, the camera didn't move, it, it just, well, it moved along with the character, you couldn't move it yourself, and in these kinds of games, I, I can see why you would need to have a camera, because to look around like certain buildings or, you know, things that are in the, the foreground or background might like, get in the way. And I see why you need to do it, but it's kind of odd with these sprites because the sprites are moving as you're moving the camera around, so that is, it, it kind of shows you which way they're facing. But then if you go like up above, they don't really have like an above 
sprite so it's kind of just like their backwards sprite when it looks like they're like facing the ground so that's a little odd with the the sprites and the camera moving it's not game breaking or anything it's it's not terrible but it's certainly something that i noticed and it's, it's, if the game released like this, I would be fine with it. It's just kind of, I don't know. It, it, it was a little bit odd to me, but that, that's really all I have to say about that is that the camera is probably necessary. I'm assuming that, they're, that the developers were probably going between adding it or not adding it, like having the camera be able to move around. And you know what? I, I think it's fine how they, how they added it in there and have the different sprites to, to show which way they're facing. As for the voice acting, the voice acting is actually superb. I think that it's better than Brave the Default, at least the first two games. Um, I haven't played all that much of Brave the Default 2 yet, but I think it's it. the characters seem much more authentic than those kinds of uh, games. And I think that it's pretty much on point with Octopath or Fire Emblem. There is some good voice acting in both of those games, and I think that so far from what I've seen from the demo, it seems pretty nice. You know, the, the characters seem like they are who they are. It doesn't really seem, it doesn't seem kiddish or like they're trying to be something that they're not, or like overly expressive or underexpressive. I think it's just, it's good. The voice acting is is good, and if the entire game has this level of voice acting, you will be perfectly fine. And then as for the characters. The characters seem interesting, although the, the double princes can be a bit confusing at times. <laughs> They're just two princes. Um, but no, the characters seem nice. I hope that they get more developed within the rest of the game. I'm sure that they will. I know that the demo takes place. It said like halfway through the game, which is interesting. But yeah, no, I think that they all seem pretty unique. We'll have to see how it is in the final game though. One thing that I was not expecting is that this game is violent. There's blood, there's cruel language, like, there is a quote where someone said, like, bodies were, were piling up along the river and you couldn't identify who the bodies were or something like that. And obviously, there's a mission where you burn down houses, burn down, like, an entire village. It's, it's pretty violent, and compared to, again, like I, I'm doing a lot of comparisons here to Octopath Traveler because it's pretty much a spiritual successor than that and a different kind of gameplay. This is much more, this is much crueler and more like gruesome. It doesn't deal with personal themes, so Octopath had more personal themes, such as elfin struggle with what's moral and what's not, or Primrose being forced into becoming, you know, the dancer, or Ophelia's struggle with death and family and all of that. Those are more personal themes. This is more a holistic view of like kingdoms and and you know what's right for the good of the people. And it's a uh, it's, it's kind of a shift. And I'm I'm assuming both of these came. I'm assuming that this game is probably going to be rated like teen, just like Octopath Traveling World. But, I mean, it was kind of surprising when, like, someone got stabbed or something and then there's just blood, like, all on the floor. It's it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty violent. But, I mean, it's not a kid's game, really, so it's to be expected. But I just thought that that struck out at me from playing other games. This was, it seemed pretty gruesome. Moving on to the music, the music that I've heard from the demo is great. So it's not the same composer as like Octopath Traveler, Brave the Default, but it fits this game well. This music is again, I feel, trying to be less personal. So like, instead of giving each character their own theme or like intro battle theme, kind of like Octopath Traveler does, this is more about the struggle of groups of people. So the music kind of reflects that. It's more serious in tone. It's less, less happy, I suppose you could say. But it does have a lot of like trumpet use um, because it's kind of like a battlefield. It's just a battle game, you know, battlefield, battlefield simulator. But no themes like the the intro battle prep theme or the battle prep theme, and then. 
uh, like the uh, battle where you're burning down the houses and all that. Those are extremely, extremely good songs, and I've had them stuck in my head at least for the past week. So, yeah, no, I I think the the music fits this this game very well. The map select is one area that I think is intriguing, but at, at least how it's implemented now isn't really needed. So, the map section is where you select what missions you're going to do or side quests and all that and i get it why there's a map here you go in and have different things going on but at least in this demo it really did not serve all that much of a purpose because there were only like two three battles in the demo obviously you know you're, it shows where that battle is and they can go and go into it but if you're doing a side quest or if you're going to another area if you click on that it brings up a cutscene where you hear about 30 seconds of dialogue and then you're brought back to the map. So it just seems really unnecessary to have all these little sections of dialogue and all that and then you come back out and then you're like, oh, that's it? I wasn't going into a battle or something? I think what could be done is have the battles spread out on the map if you want to keep the map. Then you go into it, do the battle, and then these cutscenes that play afterwards, just play them after the battle. You don't have to go into the map, do a side quest, watch something, and then go back out to the map. It just seems like something needs to be fixed here, and it seemed just kind of off at times if you're expecting something like, oh, here's a side quest, I'm gonna go meet this person, and I'm gonna like do a battle or something, but no, you just go in you meet a person, and they talk for 30 seconds, and then you're back out on the map. You're like, oh, that was it? Finally, the another main aspect of the game is that choices actually matter. And I think this voting concept of persuading others is a very interesting idea that, that works out, at least from the one time it was used in the demo, works out very well. Because instead of automatically um, le leading it, leaving it up to the player to decide what path to take, these other you know, individuals get to vote themselves what is best to happen. And it is sort of up to you because you have to persuade others to go with the idea that you want. But I really like how you can go and obtain info from like towns and all that and different people and then persuade others to tell them, oh, this is, you get an, an unlockable little phrase that you tell them. And then they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I hear your, your opinion. And they either go with you or they stick with that opinion. I feel like throughout the game, it's probably going to get more difficult. People are going to be more stern in their thinking. Just going with, oh, yeah, I, I um, I'm sticking with my thoughts and then you would probably have to persuade them in different ways and all that and then maybe maybe the one that you pick isn't even the one that that ends up uh, it's not like a like a fire emblem right where you choose between the, the three paths and that's what happens it's i think it's it's more of like a throughout the game okay here's how we're gonna go are we gonna do this battle or are we gonna do this battle and you kind of have to persuade the other people i i i, I like the persuading i think it's interesting how you can get the group to think about something versus just you as a leader saying this is what we're doing. But those are just my overall main topics of discussion that I thought about uh, Project Triangle Strategy after playing the demo and after watching. I'm going to submit my feedback, of course, to the developers via this survey after this, and I encourage anyone else who did the demo to do that as well because uh, as we've seen with Octopath Traveler and Brave New Default 2. The developers actually look at these things and they make changes based on what you say. So I'm going to give them my thoughts and I encourage you to give them your thoughts as well. But overall, I'm just incredibly excited for this game. It looks looks great. Um, this, this is going to be my game of the year probably for next year. But I mean, I've got Brave New Default 2 to hold me over <laughs> for this year, at least like the first half of the year. Let me know what you guys think of the whole game and the different uh, combat and the choices and all that. Do you think that it's good? Do you think that it's bad? What do you think could be improved? As always, thank you all so much for tuning in Tea Time, and I'll see you guys.
Later.